Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey you guys, so yesterday I talked about the whole Juice World situation with his untimely passing and now more information has come out. There's a young boy who says his dad was on the police force in Chicago and he's speaking about what he heard happened to Juice World. And then now the media is also basically confirming this young boy's story by saying that Juice World did swallow a bunch of Percocets, hence having the seizure and eventually they're trying to say that he killed himself. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this video and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. This is what happened to Juice World. This is, okay, listen. Officers that were on the scene, right? My buddy's dad, he's an officer in Chicago. He's friends with the officers that were on scene with Juice World. This is how I know the evidence. Juice World flew from California with 80 pounds of weed to Chicago Midway Airport on his private jet. You can't do that. 80 pounds of weed is 35 years in jail minimum, okay? Somebody along the way, along the flight, snitched on Juice World. Juice World then found out that he was snitched on. One of them, somebody must have told him that he got snitched on. I don't know how he found out. Juice World was not going to go to jail for 35 years. He was guilty. It was his plane, his weed. Okay. Juice World then proceeds on video at the airport. Okay. It's evidence, so I don't have the video. But this is from the officer. The officer said this. He pulled something out of his pocket, put it in his mouth. He then proceeded to have a seizure and die. Okay. I know it's sad. I'm not trying to get clout, and I'm not capping. That is what happened. All right, so you guys just saw that video. So this is what the media is reporting. Juice World might have made a fatal decision as law enforcement searched his private jet, swallowing a bunch of painkillers in an attempt to hide them from the feds. The pilot who was flying Juice's private plane alerted the authorities on the ground that the rapper's entourage had guns on them, which is a big no-no in air travel. When they landed, the FBI and the FAA agents were waiting for Juice and company. Allegedly, at some point between the plane landing and the feds conducting their search, Juice was seen swallowing several Percocet pills in what people believe was an attempt to hide them. It's being alleged that the pills might have contributed to his death and possible OD. An autopsy was performed on the rapper Monday, but additional testing, including toxicology, cardiac, and neuropathology, is still needed before determining the official cause. Paramedics allegedly spent 40 minutes treating Juice, primarily trying to get his heart to beat regularly. They eventually transported him at 2.55 a.m. to the hospital. They arrived at 3.06, and the doctors at the hospital pronounced him dead. So that is what is being reported. And it's funny how everything I was saying in the video yesterday is kind of mirroring um, what happened. You know, I said this was a drug trafficking case. This was something serious, and that somebody on the plane had to have been the one who alerted authorities to be there when Juice World and them's plane landed. And now we're finding out that it was the pilot. And like I said, him already having done drugs earlier that day probably added to his stress and anxiety. And especially knowing that he was caught with all those illegal Percocets on him, plus the 70 pounds of marijuana. Again, that'd be his name in the headlines, him going to jail, because this is drug trafficking. Nobody travels with 70 pounds of marijuana unless you're getting ready to sell it and distribute it. So I think it was all of that, you know, played a role in him deciding to swallow those pills. And unfortunately, that was a grave mistake that he made, okay? So now, since all this information has come out, it's been so much information you guys are sending me, especially the young fans concerning Juice World. Like I said, I only knew about his music. I didn't follow him on social media. I wasn't, you know, I, I don't have in-depth knowledge of his life and all his music videos. Because again, I'm not 18 to 21, okay? You know, if I heard a song that I liked, I checked it out, you know what I mean? But I don't know the whole ins and outs of Juice World. So you guys have been keeping me posted. Y'all have been sending me stuff. So I want to also go ahead and hit on something that Jerna Lucas talked about earlier today. And G Herbo had the nerve to have an attitude and try and call him out. So let me go ahead and read to you guys what Jerna Lucas had to say. Check this out. So Jordan says, Juice World was 21. He was a product of our generation of rappers who glorified drugs and made it cool. I'm blaming y'all niggas for this shit. All that lean and pills that niggas glorify and talk about, you teaching the kids to do it. Shake my head, you happy now? Rest in peace at Juice World. Gone too soon. So that is what Jordan Lucas had to say. And in my personal opinion, Jordan Lucas told no lies, okay? And because G Herbo wasn't really listening and he was wanting to get in his feelings, he clapped back at Jerner. And this is what G Herbo had to say. Go ahead and check this out. So Herb says, 
He's a fucking clown. Niggas don't know what niggas be going through. Niggas ain't trying to be cool. Shoddy was on top of the fucking world. You think he was trying to fit in? If that shit was easy, Shoddy would have quit. Shoddy ain't see none of that shit coming. He ain't see millions coming from fame, coming from none of that shit. I got 50 homies dead on my granny. Niggas been shot, been in the streets over 10 years of my life, been addicted to Zans, Lean, X-Pills, Percocet, still smoke weed every day, all day, till this day. I was blessed with a strong enough mind to quit that lean and that other shit when I want. I've been to detox twice. This shit is a daily process. Juice made some of the best music in the world with his own style. He ain't had to fucking fit in. Niggas be having to self-medicate. He was a star. He can't go on stage thinking about the demons he's fighting in his head. I can speak about this shit on and on, man. But this shit's always deeper than what you see. So don't speak on shit if you can't say, I once done it or I relate to it. Ooh, wee, that was a lot of damn reading, honey. You could just hear the anger in Herbo's voice. I think the problem is Herbo is, you know, he's close to Juice World. They make videos together and everything else. He's too attached to the situation, so he's taking it personal because Jerner Lucas never said that Juice World was trying to fit in. He's calling out these rappers that Juice World himself admitted to looking up to when he was a shorty. Okay, he said it was the Futures and the Gucci's and their music that prompted him to start, you know, experimenting with drugs at the age of 11 and 12. Here goes a snippet from his interview with Adam22. Y'all go ahead and check this out. You always had issues with drugs even before you started to get famous and uh, rich? Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, it was something that I was into early, low-key due to music. Because, like, I was a music head, so like in sixth grade, seventh grade, I'm hearing songs about Sip and Lean. Those are like the real influential years, I feel like, especially for like a boy. Mm. Like, find out who your role models are, you what you like, basketball, football. That's like when you start kind of choosing the dreams you want to chase, damn near. Right. So like, sixth, seventh grade, I was hooping, I was playing baseball, I was good at both at the time. But I was also like freestyling, and I was really into music. Like, I used to damn near worship this shit, like I was into music so much. So my family putting me on to all this different music, Future, Gucci, all these niggas talking about drugs. Bro. You can't help but ignore how fun or how interesting, at least, they're making Zans and Lean and all the shit sound. Yeah, bro. Like, when I heard Future, the first song I ever heard by Future was Ain't No Way Around It. The second song I've <clears> ever heard by Future is um, Dirty Sprite, like, for off the first Dirty Sprite mixtape. Mm -hmm. And that shit had me wanting to sip Lean at, like, 11, 12 years old, bro. Yeah. So, you know... I didn't know if that was what I was really finna be doing, but... All right, so you guys just heard Juice World's interview where he admitted to starting using drugs because of a lot of these rappers. But basically, if you guys remember, a few years ago, I did a video about the whole situation between Floyd Mayweather and Future when Floyd Mayweather was basically blasting these rappers in the industry and saying, you know, when did it become cool to start bragging about doing drugs and, you know, bragging about Molly Percocet? And people were saying that Floyd was a hater. He needs to shut the hell up and stick to boxing. He can't spell. And, you know, just deflecting from everything Floyd Mayweather was saying. And I made my video agreeing with Floyd Mayweather and also blasting Future for promoting drug use and promoting that in that song, Molly Percocet, okay? It's okay to be a junkie. <laughs> in the right music world. It's okay. It's okay to be a junkie. I mean, it, it, this is crazy, but it's okay to, it's okay to OD on drugs. It's okay to take any drugs now. It's okay to be a junkie. Mm. Right, so you guys just heard that interview, you know, and I think that Floyd Mayweather, I don't always agree with things that he says or does, but I definitely agree with him in this interview. He kept it all the way 100. And, I, and I'm really glad that a big celebrity like Floyd Mayweather is calling out the bullshit. Um, OG Maceo caught this out like two years ago. He caught out, you know, Future for glorifying drug use, especially with his albums Dirty Sprite 1 and Dirty Sprite 2. And now he's always bragging about lean and stuff like that. And, you know, I've talked about this in previous videos. I've showed you guys, you know, clips of 21 Savage pouring lean on his pancakes and, you know, just making it seem like this shit is okay and there's no consequences to this. Yeah, you know what we're doing, dog. Pouring red on our waffles, man. You know how we rock. I don't understand the point of people just getting high off of promethazine and pain medicine and popping perks. And I just, I hate that feeling, you know what I'm saying?
And for people to do this as a recreation is crazy. And, and the unfortunate thing is when people are abusing prescription drug medications, it makes it tougher for people who have real chronic illnesses to get their medicine because people are straight up abusing prescription drugs. You know, it's really sad that it's gotten to this point. And I think what I find even more disgusting is the fact that Future doesn't really partake in this. You know, he's come out, he's admitted that he doesn't really use drugs and this is just part of his marketing ploy. You know, and that's the part that's sad is that a lot of young kids, they don't realize that. A lot of young kids are not watching the interview where Future is saying that he doesn't use drugs and this is a marketing ploy. A lot of kids are getting his album and they're listening to the album and they're thinking that that's how you're supposed to live your life. You're supposed to be high all the time and buzzed out your mind and, and putting fucking lean on your pancake syrup as opposed to using Aunt Jemima. You know, the whole situation is insane to me. And another thing that also bothers me on top of that is, you know, Future is not the first one to do this. Floyd Mayweather's own homeboy, 50 Cent, did the same thing. You know, 50 Cent did the same thing on his albums. He bragged about drinking and, you know, doing drugs and all that stuff. And then it came out that 50 Cent has, doesn't do drugs. And he doesn't do drugs because he saw how drugs affected his mother. And he doesn't drink. And he's probably one of the healthiest guys in the rap industry. All right, so you guys just saw that flashback, and it's so eerie because that was back in 2017, and everything that Floyd Mayweather was saying was the truth, and everything I was saying co-signing him was the truth, and so many people clowned him and told him he was an old hater, and he needs to stick to boxing. I got trolled, of course, like always. This culture is not cool. These drugs do not make you immune because people know you, because you're famous, because you have money. It eventually takes a toll, and it starts to deteriorate your body. So again, so many rappers have died since 2017, and once again, we're asking the question, why is this happening? And especially being that you have a lot of people who are vulnerable, you have a lot of people, you know, who are more followers than they are leaders, and then when it came out that Future don't even do these drugs. Okay, he doesn't do Molly's or Percocets. You know, I think he did lean at one point, then he quit. So a lot of this drug use that he brags about and he talks about and he glorifies, he doesn't even do. But unfortunately, these young kids, when you're 11 and 12, you don't know that your favorite rapper isn't doing this and it's just a song. You're assuming that that's what they do to be cool. That's, you know, that's how they make music. That's how they fit in. Hence why um, Juice WRLD was saying that that's what prompted him to start getting into the drugs, okay? Now, I'm not solely blaming Future. I'm not solely blaming Gucci because at the end of the day we are all our own person okay and a lot of people listen to that music and they never wanted to go do molly they never want to go do percocets okay so i don't want to just blame these rappers and act like you know it's their fault that juice world is dead but we do have to start the conversation we do have to start the dialogue and people need to stop being so defensive okay because right now you have not only this young man dead because of his actions but you have a lot of people following suit trust and believe this weekend juice world was not the only one who died of a drug overdose there are plenty of children and young people all across america who didn't wake up this past weekend okay because they were experimenting with drugs because their favorite rapper is bragging about zans and lean and perks and you know just all types of stuff like this whole druggy culture and let's not get it twisted so many times we like to act like it's just this generation and this generation is nothing but pill heads let's not forget about the 80s and 90s with the whole crack epidemic okay so our generation and, and, and our and our parents generation there's always been heavy drug use okay People had Studio 54 where you could just go in and do lines of cocaine and everything else. So drug use is nothing new. But I think the difference is back then, it was more of a secret. There was like a slight shame to it. Like you were only, you know, you were only bold enough to do drugs around your druggy friends. You didn't brag about it. You didn't talk to people who weren't in that drug world. But now it's so glorified that it's scary. That these kids don't even understand the consequences of mixing uppers and downers and zans and lean. And then adding alcohol on top of that. They're making these deadly concoctions. And then on top of that, a lot of these pills that they're getting, they're not coming from the doctors. They're not coming from pharmacies. They're bootleg pills that are being laced with fentanyl. And that is what's killing off a whole entire generation. So it's really scary a lot of the stuff that's going on but like I've always said there's power in the tongue and Juice World spoke a lot of things even if he was joking that I'm just looking at this like dang this is really scary there was even a song where he's talking about you know if you try and take my drugs that's suicide now I look at it like a double entendre he could be talking about the people coming for his drugs you know that's suicide I'm gonna kill you or he could be talking about what happened to him. They're coming for his drugs and he committed suicide by swallowing them. I gotta show out. I ball too hard on these niggas to blow out. Yeah, it's a blowout. Uh, uh, yeah. 
Hey, suicide if you try to take my drugs. Suicide if you try to take my drugs. You see that it's a double entendre to me, okay? And looking back on it, hindsight is definitely 2020. Then I was also sent another video of Juice World where he's on set with G Herbo, and they're basically they created like some type of altar, and they're talking about selling their soul to the devil. It's just like a really creepy, eerie video. Y'all go ahead and check this out. I uh, I'm finna sell my soul. I'ma hit y'all when I'm through. I'ma be rich as hell. All right. Look, look, do something. It ain't take too long, Illuminati man. <laughs> what you say, Cook? <laughs> All right, so you guys just saw that video. So, like I said, I had a lot of young people in the comments like, oh, he was just playing. It was for a music video. It's not that serious, T. Like I always tell you guys, okay, be careful what you wish for because the devil will always come back to collect. What you guys need to understand is even if he was joking, even if this was all in good fun, when you shouldn't be joking like that any damn ways. But okay, fine, he was joking. It was for a music video. Do you understand the power of the tongue? Do you understand that we are all spiritual beings out here living a human existence? And that you can summon demons. You can summon other entities, okay? You can speak things into existence. You can't sit there and create altars and talk about selling your soul and, you know, the Illuminati and all that stuff. You know what I mean? You can call certain things upon you. Even people in that comment section were saying that when they first saw that video a few months ago it creeped them out and like i said that's that spirit inside of you that's the that's that's your spirit that's that spiritual part of you being irritated by those demons okay so i, I believe in all that stuff y'all can judge me and say i'm crazy it is what it is but i think that you know looking at all these videos and all this footage and people trying to put connections y'all know everybody starts connecting stuff and you know the illuminati conspiracy videos they start being cranked out and stuff like that but at the end of the day you know he made a decision and a very fateful decision that unfortunately took his life that does not take away from him as a human being that does not take away from him being a young man who just happened to make a deadly mistake and that damn sure does not take away from the good music that he did put out there and the creative genius that he was but we have to be honest we have to have an open dialogue about all of this stuff you know all of this you know playing around with with demons and talking about selling your soul even if it's a joke those other worldly entities they don't understand jokes okay and we also most importantly have to talk about the drug culture and you know what i'm saying and start holding rappers accountable like stop promoting that to the youth stop acting like there's no consequences like we literally watched little peep die on camera we literally watched him kick back on his tour bus and pour a bunch of pills in his mouth you know, and it's like, where's his management team? Where's his mom? Where are the people who care about these kids? Like, they're using them as a commodity, and it's just, it's really sad. It's really sad. It's like, how many more young rappers have to lose their life behind nonsense like this? So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation concerning this update on Juice World. And then do you agree with Jordan Lucas and what he had to say about drug culture being glorified and all these rappers that basically glorified this to an entire generation of kids? So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. And most importantly, make sure you hit that notification bell so that we can be down with the notification squad. So let me know your thoughts on this entire situation. All right, deuces.